So now let us look at what is a push down automata. The topic which you are going to study here is push down automata. Push down automata. Okay. See, when you studied finite automata, then in case of finite automata, the structure was like this. We were having a tape. We were having a tape like this. We were having a finite control and read write head and a finite memory. This memory is finite. Finite memory. Okay. And this finite automata can communicate with this finite memory. See, when we say finite memory, that means we can only store a limited number of information or you can say limited size of information in the finite memory that is why sometimes for the languages where we have to store a rest, uh, like strings like a rest power and b rest power n so those kind of strings will not be able to store in finite automata if the length of the string is infinite okay so in the case of finite automata you can clearly see we have a finite memory but when we discuss about the push down automata in case of push down automata the structure is like this we are we were having a tape there's a tape like this there's a finite control there's a finite control and here we are going to use a stack we are going to use a stack and in the bottom of the stack we are going to have a stack alphabet which is assume z0 okay and we load our strings onto the tape for example here also we load for a a b b here also we can load the strings on the finite control and so on right so what we can do is by reading a string or you can say by reading an alphabet either we can store that alphabet in the stack or we we may not choose to store that alphabet onto the stack and that decision we can take by looking at the alphabet and the top of the stack that is what is the element which is present in the top of the stack now this kind of machine is called as a push down automata so therefore if you can if you see what is the formal definition of push down automata then push down automata can be written like this a push down automata can be represented by q summation q not uh, q not n we have delta and uh, z not which is the stack alphabet so whatever the alphabet which is present on the top of the stack we have set of final state and we have tau okay so this is representing a push down automata now in this case of push down automata again the same thing q is representing set of states which is a non empty set because if the set of states uh, is empty then obviously it is nothing right so uh, the set of states will be non empty set will be having submission which is a set of input alphabet which is again non empty we will be having q not which is representing the initial state the initial state will be having z not which is representing the stack or you can say uh, bottom of the stack this will be representing bottom of stack will be having f which is set of final states set of final states will be having tau which is the stack alphabet stack alphabet means the alphabets which you can write onto the stack for example here we can have z0 we can have a we can have b so what are the alphabets bits you can write onto the stack that is called a stack alphabet and there's something called as transition function we'll be having something called as delta which is transition function transition function now this transition function varies from automata to automata for example we can have a finite automata for finite automata i have shown you what is the transition function for uh, an nfa that is not deterministic finite automata and dfa deterministic finite automata there is a change in the transition function right so here in this case of stacks again there is a change in the transition function <laughs> and the transition function is dependent on what is the value at top of the stack and what is the current symbol which we are seeing and by looking at that current symbol we can go to any certain state 
and we can write something onto the stack right so the transition function delta can be given by if you are at any particular state q and by looking at the input symbol but the, the symbol which is on top of on this uh, tape and by looking at what is the stack alphabet right so you can say uh, epsilon we can see epsilon or the stack alphabet which is tau we can go to any state from q and we can write anything onto the stack right and here it is clean closure of tau star right so that means if there are three symbols in tau for example here in this case let, let, let us assume that we are going to write three symbols onto the stack that is z0 a and b therefore tau here in this case can be written as uh, it is z0 small a and small b right so, so uh, th that means we can take a clean closure of this right so we can we can go to one uh, we can write one symbol onto the stack or we can write more than one symbol onto the stack okay and then if we discuss about uh, this delta function in case of non deterministic pda this is non deterministic push down automata see there are two types of push down automata either we can discuss about deterministic push down automata or we can discuss about non deterministic push down automata so both combined are called as push down automata and here in case of deterministic and non deterministic push down automata non deterministic push down automata is more powerful than deterministic push down automata because we cannot for for example because if we can give uh, a non deterministic push down automata for some languages then we may not be able to give a deterministic push down automata for those languages okay so here i am saying that the delta function is very varies varies from deterministic push down automata to non deterministic push down automata and this it is varying according to the number of states which we can go so in case of non deterministic push down automata delta function can be written as q cross summation union epsilon cross tau can take us to 2 raised to power q cross delta star or say we can say tau star states 2 raised to power uh, q cross tau star states so this is in case of non deterministic push down automata okay so let me show the, uh, this uh, push down automata with an example and then i'll again come back to the same uh, definition and i'll show you how this definition works in case of uh, push down automata okay now assume we have the following language the language is a raised to power n b raised to power n such that n is greater than or equal to 1 such that n is greater than or equal to 1 right now in this case when i'm saying a raised to power n b raised to power n here the number of a's should be equal to number of b's so for this particular language you cannot draw a finite automata as i already told you because there is a comparison between the number of a's and number of b's and the finite automata we cannot store infinite number of a's if you can see here the value of n is very large you can say value of n is infinity not very large it is infinity because n is open in one side so because the value of n is very large that means we cannot uh, see uh, that means the value of n can tend to infinity so number of a's should be equal to number of b's so we are going to require infinite number of states for everything but here it is not possible to build a finite automata okay I, we have already done this okay so for this language we can make a push down automata and we can make a comparison let me show you how how we can do it see let us uh, assume what are the strings in the language strings can be a b it can be a a b b it can be triple a triple b it can be four times a four times b and so on till infinity and so on till infinity now you can say we can load this string onto the tape this is the tape for example the string is a a b b and this is a finite control and this is the stack which is storing currently storing z not so what we can do is by getting the first a by getting the first a this is a stack by seeing the first a we can 
push this first A onto the stack. By seeing second A, we can push the second A onto the stack. As soon as we start getting Bs, we can pop one A. So I, as soon as I get a B, we can pop one A. I get another B, we can pop second A. Now after reading the complete string, after reading the complete string, if top of the stack is containing Z0, that means the number of A's are equal to the number of B's. Okay, so let me repeat it again. What we are going to do is we are going to have a stack. We are going to have a stack alphabet which is Z0. And if you want to compare number of A's with number of B's, then we can, you know, as soon as we get A's, we just push A's onto the stack because initially we are only expecting number of A's. We are only expecting A's here because only expecting A's. After getting A's there can be uh, any number of B's but initially we can be any number of A's and this stack is open in this direction that means we can store any number of A's. Now as soon as we get a B that means we are only going to get a B and we have to compare the number of A's with the number of B's therefore as soon as one, one B we can you know uh, pop it second b pop it third b pop it fourth b pop it now if number of b's are already finished and there's a symbol onto the stack which is a the number of a's are obviously not equal to the number of b's right but if the number of a's are already finished and number of b's are still remaining again obviously number of a's are not equal to number of b's and here in this case number of b's are more but if number of a's are equal to number of b's then obviously the number of a's you are going to push onto the stack will be popped out with the number of b's and you are going to have only z0 in your hand so this is the main uh, focus which we are the main thing which we are going to do here so how can we draw how can we draw a push down automata for this see assume this is the initial state a okay that means initial state is where the stack is containing Z0. This is a finite control and this is a tape. Tape is containing A, A, B, B like this. Okay. Now as soon as you get first A and the stack is containing Z0 then you can push this first A onto the stack. That means if you get a A, the top of the stack is containing Z0, then you can push the stack, top of stack, onto the, uh, this A onto the stack. So stack will now be containing A Z0. Right? Now if you see a second A, you can have any number of A's, but at least there should be one A. So this there's a transition to represent if at least there is a one A. This is a state B. Now we can have any number of A's. And we are going to get small a on top of stack. We are going to get only a. So if you get any number of a's, top of stack if containing a, so you can push that particular a. So what we are going to do is, see, uh, let me show you uh, to you with an example. If, uh, if there's a stack here, and there's a symbol here, right? So what I'm doing is, if there's a symbol, there's a stack, I'm taking top of the stack, I'm taking that symbol, I'm comparing these two symbols. After comparison, I'm going to perform an operation whether to put both of these symbols onto the stack or whether to remove these symbols out of the stack. Okay, here I'm saying when there's a uh, Z0 is onto the stack, I'm removing the Z0, I'm checking what is the symbol out there. I'm taking these two symbols and comparing them. After comparing them, I'm going to put this symbol inside the stack. Okay, this is a uh, uh, this is what I am doing. Okay, so here I'm saying that if top of the stack is containing a, top of the stack is containing a, and the next symbol is also a, then you are going to put those both of these symbols onto the stack. Okay, and this can happen any number of times. You can have any number of cases. Now, as soon as you get one B, that means you are sure that B's are started. So you are going to remove that B from the stack. That means removing this epsilon string of length zero. So you are going to you are taking this B. You are taking one symbol from the stack. 
you are comparing them now you can see a is compared with b now you know that b's are already started so you are going to remove both of them out of the stack that means you are going to pop now you can get any number of b's if stack is containing a then you are removing all those a's that means you are comparing the first b with this a second b with this a so as soon as as soon as the number of b's are finished so you are going to get epsilon and stack is containing z naught if number of b's are finished therefore you are going to get epsilon and top of the stack is containing z naught then leave it as z naught and accept it because number of a's must be equal to the number of b's this is the state d and this is the state d c okay so this is representing the above uh, uh, push on automata for the above language is the state diagram again i am repeating in case of push down automata the stack is not containing any alphabet so we are going to see one symbol we are going to see what is the symbol onto the stack and then we are going to compare both of these two symbols okay stack is containing z not the symbol is a stack is containing z not the symbol is a then you are going to put this a symbol onto the stack so stack will be containing a z not then you can have any number of a's so as soon as you get second a top of stack is containing a you are getting second a top of the stack is containing a sorry this is top of the stack and this is the tape alphabet so you are getting a and top of stack is containing a then you are going to put both these a's onto the stack so you are going to have a a you can have any number of a's as soon as you get one b you get one b top of the stack is containing a you are going to remove it right therefore you are going to remove this a now as soon as you get second b top of the stack is containing a you are going to remove it and if the string is finished that means you are going to get epsilon and top of the stack is only containing a z not string is finished we are going to have epsilon top of stack is only containing z not then we are going to remove it we are going to store z not onto the stack and we are going to accept it right so this is a push down automata which is representing the above language so you can clearly see there is a comparison between the strings there is a comparison between the number of a's and number of b's and the length of the string is infinite so in any case where the length of the string is infinite and there is a comparison between number of a's and number of b's in that case you will not be able to draw finite automata but you will be able to draw push down automata you will be able to draw linear bound automata in some cases you will be able to draw uh, turing machine right so we'll, we we are going to see that at later point of time for as of now you just understand that there is a comparison here length of the string is infinite so the comparison cannot be done in finite automata it can be done in push down automata like this so for there are some languages for which uh, there is a comparison but Uh, still we cannot make a push down automata we, we are going to discuss it at later point of time okay so let us move on to the second example